Number 12. Use the following equations to answer the next four questions. So it looks like we have five equations here. And let's go on with the first question. The first question says, which equation describes a physical change? Okay. So a physical change basically is only when you are changing in state. But the compound or the element stays exactly the same. When I talk about that a physical change is only a change in a compound or an element state, you are only taking a compound, so let's just say, I don't know, um, NaCl, right? That's table salt. And you would just be going from one state. I put an S here, that means solid. And it just has to go to a different state. So maybe I would take it to NaCl liquid. This would be melting if I go from a solid to a liquid. That would be melting. But if you notice, the, uh, the compound stays exactly the same. That's a physical change. The compound or the element has to stay exactly the same. On the reactants and the product side, the only thing is that there is a change in state. So only a solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous change. Now, if we look at the five equations that they gave us, right? I mean, we'll just start from the top and work our way down. One, H2O, solid, is getting converted into H2O liquid. The only thing that changed here is that it went from a solid to a liquid. This is melting. Ah, so this is a physical change. Physical change. So we already answered our first question. What equation describes a physical change? One. I'll do it like that for one. Okay, moving on. Which equation identifies the reactants and the products of a combustion reaction. So we just need to know what a combustion reaction is. A combustion reaction has a minimum of four different things going on. A combustion reaction always starts off with the hydrocarbon. And I'll just write the words for you first. A hydrocarbon is always going to be reacting with oxygen air, and it will always produce out carbon dioxide, and water. This is the basis of a combustion reaction. The things that really don't change is your addition of oxygen and your production of carbon dioxide and water. So this part that I'm highlighting here. Hydrocarbon basically just stands for the elements that's in involved in this compound. Hydro is talking about hydrogen. So I have H's. And then carbon is carbon. Usually the carbons will go first. So for example, it could be like CH4, you know, it could be um, C2H6, just basically a compound that has both carbons and hydrogens. So this is the only thing that, uh, you know, can change in a combustion reaction. So now let's go from two down to five and see which one is this combustion reaction. Well, if I look at two, oh gosh, I see a bunch of, a bunch of, negatives and positives, but I don't see anywhere O2, CO2, and H2O in number two, so that can't be it. I look at number three, I see that I have a hydrocarbon, carbon, hydrogens, hydrogens, plus O2 will yield or produce CO2 plus H2O. That looks really good, right? So that might be it. If I look at number four, I have H2O, I have no carbons on my left side, and I don't produce CO2 right on the right side or H2O. And the same thing goes for five. So number three would have to be the answer for a combustion reaction. Now, just as a side note, you might be asking yourself, why is there an oxygen in here? You're allowed to have other elements in your hydrocarbons. The two mainly are going to be oxygens and nitrogens, but you still have to have carbons and hydrogens. So you could add elements if you need to, but you cannot take away a carbon or hydrogen. That has to stay, okay? All right, C, which equation is not balanced? So we're just gonna run through them and just see if they're balanced. So for the first one, it's balanced, right? I literally have H2O, and then I have H2O. Remember, when you're balancing, disregard the states. 
I, I could care less about the states when I balance. So since it's the identical thing that's on the reactants and the product side, that's not the answer. Now let's go to number two. Let's see. Keep in mind, we don't care about the states, right? And we don't really care about the charges either. So if I look here, I have one sodium, one sodium. Okay, so that checks out, right? You have to have the same number on both sides, right, for your elements. Looks like I have one chlorine, and the one chlorine is here. I have one Ag, I have one Ag, and then I have one NO3 and one NO3. So it looks like this one is balanced. Let's now go to letter C. I have... Let's see, I'm going to just start from left to right. I have one carbon on my reactant side. I have one carbon on my product side. So the carbons are balanced. Now let's see, I have three hydrogens here, right? So I have three. And then I have another hydrogen over here. So how many do I have on my reactant side? I have a total of four hydrogens. If I go over here, let's see, here's my hydrogen. Oh, I only have two on this side, right? Uh-oh, that doesn't seem like it's balanced. This has to be the answer. So you can basically stop it at this point, right? If we did balance, you know, and did look at what's coming up next, you will see that they are balanced. The last one, which is a net, a net ionic equation. Just know that a net ionic equation is the sum of your total ionic equation. Your net ionic equation has no spectators. They have no spectator ions. It's in its final, basically, equation, where nothing can be canceled out. And a net ionic equation, the, the meaning is in the word, you have to have ions, right? And your ions are charged atoms. The atoms, the, well, the ions are the one that have a charge in the upper right hand corner. So like Na plus would be an ion. Cl minus would be a ion. So these types of equations, you got to see at least some charges, right? Or else it wouldn't be a, a ionic equation. But then the home takeaway is that there are no spectator ions. There's nothing that you can cancel out. Now, if I look at 1 through 5, I only notice two equations that have charges or ions. Number 2, right? As you can see, there's tons of charges here in the upper right-hand corner. And then number 5 as well. There's charges here. But the question is, which one is the net ionic? The net ionic has no spectator ions. It has no uh, things that you can cancel out. So if I look at number two, we just start from the top and work ourselves down. Let's see. I have sodium, right, as a plus one on the reactant side, but I see the same exact ion on the product side. Can that cancel? Yeah, it can. If you have the same exact thing on both sides of an equation, there's no gain nor loss. You get canceled. Those are spectator ions, the ones that can get canceled. The same thing here goes with the NO3, right? I see that I have an NO3 on the left, and then I have an NO3 on the right. Maybe I should just include that aqueous. They're exactly the same. So they would have to get canceled out. Net ionic equations, you do not have those guys that cancel. So since that's the case, Two cannot be a net ionic equation. This one would be the complete ionic or the total ionic, just to put things into perspective. So the only one that's left is, you know, the one at the bottom with the charges. But as you can see here, I have an H plus on the left side, but I don't have an H plus on the right side. I can't cancel that H plus out. And the same thing that goes for this one. I have an OH minus, but I don't have it on the right side, which means that these are not spectators. They're actually making a reaction. So for this one, it's the fifth uh, equation. And that's it. What do you guys think?
Let me know in the comments. Hopefully this helped. And if it did, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you would like. That would help us out greatly. And I thank you so much for that. But I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. All right? Take care. Bye-bye.